Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in today to The Tattooed Chap. I'm Drew, The Tattooed Chap. Today, for Ask the Expert, I'm gonna be interviewing Staff Sergeant Waller of Army Esports. So if you're interested in gaming or esports or Army Esports, why don't you tune in and find out more about what this program looks like. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in today. If you're interested in gaming, you're gonna love this episode because Staff Sergeant Waller is gonna be sharing about Army Esports with us today. We go back to when we both were privates serving together for the first time in the military, and we have both gone different directions, and he is now one of the leaders of the Army Esports programs, and he's gonna share with us today about what that program looks like and how you can get involved. But before we get started, I wanna do a few things. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, and also make sure to follow me on LinkedIn, so that way we can follow each other professionally. And if you've watched more than one of my videos, please do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button down below so that way you know when future content is coming out. And something that I think might be kind of fun since we're all talking about esports is maybe you can comment below with your favorite video game. If you're an older person, it's okay if you pick something from like, you know, the Atari days, or if you're a younger person, pick something modern. I don't care, I just wanna know what your favorite video game is, and I will put a few of my favorite video games down below in the comments as well. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's jump into the interview. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tattoo Chap. Today I'm excited because I have a longtime friend with me. His name is Sergeant Waller, also known as Thero on the gaming channels and all that stuff. I don't really know what that means, but Really what it comes down to is he is a one of the main people involved with the Army Esports. And so I have him here today to kind of talk about esports and what that looks like. So, Thero, thank you for being here today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe what you do with the Army and Army Esports? Thank you very much for having me on here today. Uh, uh tattooed chap if we're, if we're going by our, our moniker names if right, you right. <laughs> um so i run operations for the program uh we have the u.s army esports team which is comprised of kind of three different levels if you will we mm -hmm. have the 16 soldiers at knox whose day-to-day -day responsibilities are to you know improve their gameplay improve their craft and go and be ambassadors of the army to the rest of the civilian population mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of individuals out there who don't know what the army has to offer as far as career benefits you know engagement education just the whole kind of package that the army has to offer mm -hmm. uh and I, I think that number somewhere around like 50 percent of today's uh you know kind of that 17 to 34 just don't have that experience with the military so we are here to kind of break that stigma and show that there's more to the army than simply you know kind of what everyone pictures in Hollywood and in the movies. So right. those 16 soldiers, their primary job is that outreach to go and be part of that engagement. We also have about 150 other soldiers that are, are known as our at-large team. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're members of our competitive teams that any soldier can go and apply for as long as they're good at a game. So you represent one of the many games that we have, whether it be at Super Smash Brothers, Overwatch, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty, Magic the Gathering, you name it, we probably have it within our Discord server and within our program. So for those individuals that make the teams, we will send them to competitions and they will represent the Army. So like I said, it's about a roster of about 150. Okay. But at one kind of level below that, we have a community of about 20,000 soldiers and civilians online in our Discord that connect and play games together. So it's a great opportunity to relax, kind of de-stress a little bit if you've been, you know, busy pounding away at work all day and right. you just want to get some matches in and you may not have anyone that plays this specific game you're looking for. So feel free to join our Discord and uh, get some matches in. Very cool. Uh, yeah, so, you know, one of the things that a lot of people probably don't know about us is that we started our military careers at the same time when we were both privates in Korea um, with... 41st signal battalion and throwback <laughs> i know way back when <laughs> and uh it's kind of cool to get to see our careers how we progress you know i was working as a mechanic and you're uh working in the um the signal shop and all that stuff i remember being in the barracks and you were playing games a lot and sometimes we'd make fun of you but now here you are like kind of right. living the dream <laughs> who's laughing now yeah right <laughs> and so um 
So maybe tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to this position and maybe for some of our soldiers that are watching now that might want to in the future maybe get involved on and, and things of that nature. So like you alluded to, you know, I joined the army way back when in the dinosaur age. Um, <laughs> so I joined in 2006. I joined as an IT specialist. So I got to roll my face around on a keyboard, play internet tag and, and do a lot of dumb things for, for Uncle Sam on the internet. So most of the time it was plugging cables back in because somebody unplugged it or, you know, having them turn it back on and off again. So right. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I did that for about six years and then I, uh, I got voluntold to go be a recruiter. Uh, kind of mixed feelings about it at first. Uh, and then after I got out on recruiting, I fell in love with it. Kind of the interactions that I had, um, probably very similar to, to your circumstances, that kind of, uh, servant leadership, that call that, that you had, I saw the interactions that I was able to have at my level with, uh, young men and women who might be interested in the military and being able to shape that journey for them. So I found a calling in that and I made the decision to become a full-time recruiter and I've been doing that for the last six years now. But for esports specifically, um, you know, I've always been a gamer. It's always been kind of what it's been part of. You know, I make I make jokes about it with my parents all the time now. Where it's like, well, now I get to do this. You know, yeah. you were laughing at me and telling me <laughs> I wasn't going to go anywhere now. But like, who's laughing now? Right. Um, so yeah, it's been it's always been a part of my life. And when the army announced this program. Uh, back in 2017, 2018, <clears throat> the, uh, I, I immediately got involved with it because I saw its potential as far as being a great community for the Army, as well as, you know, hey, this is always something I've been passionate with. When I joined, I never, I never thought I would be right where I am. Uh, right. It was all just kind of voluntary. Hey, I want to help the program get it going. So I took over the Discord server with my background in IT. And I was able to then kind of help shape and mold that and get that going. Um, and at the time, the higher ups had noticed and they had selected me to come be part of the permanent team out at Fort Knox uh, due to my background in IT and being a recruiter as well. So I'm able to, to talk that piece and the engagement as well. Uh, you know, that's really cool. Uh, I think you're right. One of the things that uh, as a chaplain, I really enjoy doing is really just like kind of loving soldiers and their families and serving them. Um, the best that I can. And uh, one of those ways that I've done that in my community over time is I've been really active and engaged in recruiting efforts in one form or another, even though I've never been a recruiter myself, just because I've found uh, in my life, I came from not, a, I, came, I came from pretty humble beginnings and the army's given me so much opportunity in so many different ways. Um, that it's hard not to brag about it and want other people to enjoy um, what I've what what is given me. And so, yeah, I, I totally understand um, wanting to share that. You know, so that that left coast upbringing. I know, right? Yeah, that's right. You're from Oregon, aren't you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So, yeah, and I'm from Washington. So, yeah, left coast. Works out. <laughs> best coast. It's the best coast. <laughs> yes, left coast is the best coast. Um, so, why don't you tell me a little bit? Because I'm not really a gamer. And as I was telling you earlier, like the only gaming I do really is I got one of those uh, reissues of those mini um, NESs, the mini Nintendos when they came out a couple years ago. And I played that stuff with my kids. My kids want me to buy a Switch and all that kind of stuff. And we're probably going to get one for them for Christmas. So there you go. Um, but, uh, okay. you know, I don't have watch this video. I, yeah, <laughs> I won't let them watch it. <laughs> they wouldn't want to watch it anyways. But uh <laughs> So I really don't know what esports is, and I know that there's like this big thing out there uh, in competing in video games. And so maybe you could tell me just a little bit about esports in general for myself, and maybe for those that are watching this that don't know a whole lot about esports, and also maybe what army esports is. I know you kind of alluded to it a little bit with like with that stuff, but maybe you can talk about that as a as a whole and kind of inform the uninformed, if you will. Okay, that works. So I, I don't consider myself a subject matter expert on esports in any way possible. Uh -huh. But currently, esports is one of the fastest growing industries in America. And obviously, right now, with the onset of COVID and, you know, the whole kind of culture shift that we've had, esports has taken off even further right now because we're all stuck at home. What are we doing when we're at home? We play video games, right? So it's just kind of been a, a I don't want to say a perfect storm for esports specifically. 
but there has been much more emphasis on kind of the the benefits of being able to be in esports. Uh, the esports industry itself is, like I said, huge. There's there's so much involved with it. But for the U.S. Army esports team, we focus on the competitive side of things. Um, so much like you have your your college football teams, you have your your high school football teams, and then you have like your you know NFL football teams. There's different divisions of esports as well. So you have your high school level uh, esports teams, you have your collegiate level esports team, then you kind of have your your pro, your top tier, your sponsored teams. Um, yeah. And you know if you do pay attention to any of that stuff, you'll see it's grown a lot more in the fact that football teams like the Dallas Cowboys, they have their own esports team complexity. Really? Uh, you have the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have their own uh, esports team, the Pittsburgh Knights. So there, there is a lot of uh, similarities between how those organizations are structured mm -hmm. uh, with traditional sports. And, you know, regardless of your, your thought process on, you know, well, esports isn't a real athlete, the skill sets that it takes to be at that competitive level, it's not just simply picking up a video game, picking up a controller, grabbing a mouse and keyboard and, and magically getting good. It takes that practice, that dedication to be at a competitive level. Right. It's, you know, you can't just wake up one day and go be, you know, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. there, there's so much work that has to go into trying to be Michael Jordan. I, I know I'm dating myself. I guess I should say <laughs> LeBron James. There we go. Right, right. You, know, you can't be the king in a day. It takes that grind to get there. And esports is is very similar along those lines. But for the U.S. Army esports program specifically, we are looking at that that competitive level. Obviously, we're not going to be able to go and get sponsored to the same extent that like the Dallas Cowboys are or anything like that. So we have to kind of judge ourselves. So we, we try and pick and choose in the pro-am area. Mm -hmm. So the, the kind of professional amateur, because we understand that, hey, we're soldiers. We still have other duties and responsibilities that we want to do. But at the same time, like, I don't want to go and play a bunch of high schoolers and completely stomp them because right. then they just feel bad. And now we feel bad. But right. we'll, uh, so, so we do try and focus on that pro-am circuit just to make things a little more engaging and spicy because without that competition, there's, there's no room for growth. Yeah. Definitely. I could, I can definitely see how that is the case. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking about like more traditional sports, if you want to use that terminology, um, how it can be a, uh, a community building thing, um, relationally, you know, and with COVID even more so as, you know, people are stuck in their rooms, you know, type situation and how esports doesn't just, uh, isn't just the competitive nature, but there's that relationship nature that's built into it as well. I can see how that could be pretty, uh, pretty impactful. And, uh, yeah, just thinking about what sports that I like to do and all that. So, and it's, it's one of those weird things too, because like as soldiers, we, we have to be able to communicate, we have to be able to make quick decisions mm -hmm. and esports is a lot of team-based gameplay. So, right. you know, a lot of the, the skill sets that it generally takes to become a soldier also translate into that gaming world as far as those soft skills, not like, you know, I don't have to be physically fit to go be a gamer, but you know, that, that the soft skills still transfer the ability to communicate that, that teamwork that's required, the quick decision making, the flick right. judgments, like all of those snap reactions, that Twitch motion yeah. is, is, is what it takes to be at that competitive level. Yeah. And, and, uh, the video games that at least that I'm drawn towards, uh, as when I used to play them a lot more is more of the strategy based video games and all that stuff. And I can see we're old. Now, those types of skills um, would be invaluable um, in the military or, or really anywhere, but yeah. Right. <laughs> so and there's, there's a lot of crosstalk and a lot, a lot of correlation that, you know, a lot of people don't think about until it's brought up. So I always try and point those things out that, you know, Hey, we're, we're not here to like try and just recruit people into becoming soldiers. It's mm -hmm. those soft skills that will then allow you to uh, transition into the civilian world to remain successful right yeah and a lot of people do that you know they stay they do one short stint in the army or military in general and then they go out and have successful careers on the outside as well so definitely you know it's kind of interesting because we're from the northwest like gaming's kind of a huge deal up here you, we have like nintendo and so many other little uh, startups up here in seattle and uh i've had several friends that were like video game testers went to a school called DigiPen, which is like a video game making school, um, worked for Microsoft on the Xbox and things of that nature. And 
They're telling me they have top secret stuff they can't tell me, you know, in regards to like upcoming stuff launches. And it's it's just kind of interesting to see how when we started off as kids, like video gaming stuff in any capacity was kind of something that you just did on your off time where now, whether it be through esports or through electronics and so on and so forth, it's turning into careers and uh, a massive part of our culture. Um, yeah, it just, it's just really interesting to see that this is a, uh, a thing that, you know, 15 years ago wouldn't have been a thing or maybe it would have been, you know, kind of, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but it's it's real and it's viable. And um, yeah, so anyways, it, it just kind of blows my mind a little bit. So when it comes to um, Army esports, we have a lot of soldiers that are out there that game. I know I talked to my soldiers and many of them on the weekends and at night, you know, they'll actually do like video, they'll actually be gaming and um, either as individuals or with people or, you know, all that. How does one of my soldiers or a soldier I run into, how does they, how do they get involved in um, Army esports? So I would say the first step for anyone interested in joining the U.S. Army esports team, either just the community, the at-large team, or trying to get one of those coveted slots at Fort Knox where this becomes your full-time job, uh, the first step is to join our Discord. So it's going to be discord.gg slash U.S. Army esports. All one word, no hyphens, no nothing. We have our own verified Discord server in there. Uh, right now it's a little bit locked down. So you'll just have to message one of the admin or staff on the screen that you'll see, and you'll be able to get access into the Discord. But yeah. that would be that first step. And then tryouts are generally hosted every six months. It kind of comes and goes. Obviously, with soldiers, you know, still doing their day-to-day -day jobs, we understand field rotations come up, uh, deployments come up, PCS has come up. So we, we have a pretty flexible roster uh, as far as that stuff. So we, we always want the most competitive team, but also we're understanding that this isn't your job. This is not your main priority, but we still want you to be part of this community. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. And I'll have uh, that stuff down below in the notes as well as I'll put the, the stuff on the screen. So that way, uh, if you're watching this, you know exactly uh, what to go and see and do to uh, do all this. Um, so uh, what about future soldiers or people that are wanting to be in the military? Are they allowed to be part of the Army esports or how do they fit into that whole? Um, spectrum. So anyone who is interested can join our Discord. It is a community. It's not limited to just active duty service members. Okay. So they're able to jump in and get some matches and play against our teams if they want. Unfortunately, you do have to be an active duty soldier, a reserve soldier, or a National Guard soldier to be on a competitive team. So you do have to be in the Army to represent the Army in competitive gaming. Um, so th there is that caveat there. But anyone is welcome to join the Discord server, play against us. If there's anyone out there that has teams and they want to, you know, scrim against us, we're, we're always down for open scrims. You know, that's how growth is done is getting, right. getting your butt whooped every once in a while and, <laughs> and taking the licking and reassessing what you did right. wrong. Either side. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Either side. Either side, of course. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just one of those things where that it's an open community so come in join us get some matches in uh we we even have like community nights where we'll get a bunch of people from various games like our overwatch team will go and play against call of duty mm -hmm. and they're completely different games but it's just right. fun little mashups that we'll do or we get the magic the gathering players that'll take a call of duty player who never plays magic the gathering <laughs> and like try and get them to play with them and be like yeah this is a whole new game and they're like i don't even know what i'm doing so <laughs> it, it, there's some there's some comedy in there. Yeah. Uh, we, we have those community nights that we'll do where we'll just kind of pick a random game from the week and we'll all just jump in and, and start playing it together. So there's definitely a lot to do within the Discord. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we have a, a great staff. A lot of the staff in the Discord all vo are volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, they are soldiers just like you and I that you know have passion for this, have a desire to see this program succeed. Mm -hmm. And they are volunteering their time as well. So big shout out to those individuals. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's pretty cool. That, I've never, um, I can imagine playing those two different games, you know, like I'm thinking of like other sports, you know, like from if you're a skateboarder and all of a sudden you're like trying to do mountain biking and you've never really done right. it versus uh, golfing. Like, we're pretty hilarious. <laughs> so uh, quick rapid fire questions uh, talking about gaming just uh, from you, like what are your uh, 
just these quick questions, okay? So not long answers, just rapid fire, okay? Are you ready? Got it. Okay. I'm ready. So what game, what is the game that hooked you making you a gamer in one sentence and why? World of Warcraft. Uh, I've been playing it for 15 years. I've been playing it longer than I've been married and longer than I've been in the army. So, yeah. Yeah, that was the game that you played all the time. Exactly. <laughs> that was the game I played in Korea all the time. Yeah. It's still my my Achilles heel. I still play it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think my my go back, uh, my game that I really enjoy, and I, I, I heard that there is a... Uh, kind of like a cult following of it was starcraft um was, was a game that was where i was at um but yeah Any, okay so another quick fire question um what is your current favorite game and why my current favorite game oh ah uh, shoot that that's actually a hard one uh i'm gonna have to say World of Warcraft. <laughs> I, I've I've been on a I've been on another kick. I just came back to it, so it's it's kind of my Achilles heel. But if if I'm gonna say retro game, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with Jet Force Gemini on the Nintendo 64. Very it's cool. A, it's it's a throwback there. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you think is the most overrated game and why? Now that you might offend some people, but <laughs> Call of Duty. Call of Duty. I said it. <laughs> I said it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And uh, what game are you most excited about now that might have just came out or one that's coming out soon? <laughs> this is, I, I hate to be that guy, but it, the new World of Warcraft expansion launches in like mm, two months. So, <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm excited about that. That's cool. I mean, like, I'm going to make sure to take a week of leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just so I can play World of Warcraft, all right? That's very cool. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, like sometimes there's there's classics and there's games that have longevity and they have it for a reason, right? So exactly. Um, so uh thanks for the rapid fire stuff. One quick question. I see you're wearing like a cool army like jersey. And as I as I was looking a little bit at um the esports stuff, I recognize that people actually wear jerseys for this stuff. Is it like what sports teams could i get online and go buy one or do you know that kind of thing or yeah so these jerseys are available for purchase and i can send you that link okay. um they're they're available for purchase none of the funds go to us or anything like that i have to make sure to to caveat all of that right um so it is through a third program and, and obviously we're not sponsoring them or anything like that but they're the ones who make our jerseys okay. um and, and they're great jerseys anyone can order them uh but if you're on a team uh, you get special little monikers on the back. So like. Nice. Just like in, uh, you know, traditional sports, we've got our, uh, our gamer tag and our rank on the back as well. So okay. nice little spice there. Very cool. So yeah, if you guys are interested in getting a Jersey and all that stuff, I'll have a link down below. Um, yeah, I, that kind of blew my mind when I was doing a little bit of digging. I was like, Oh, they wear jerseys too. That's kind of cool. So, Okay. And, and these were actually designed by one of our soldiers here at Fort Knox. He's uh, he's actually a military police officer, but uh -huh. he does a lot of graphic design and video production. Mm -hmm. He's the one who makes all our videos, uh, and he actually designed these. So we're we're really excited because they look clean, like super clean. Yeah, they look they look legit. Uh, I was looking at them. I'm like, you know, I might want to get me a, get me one of those. Right. <laughs> right. So, um, one last question is: Do you guys have a chaplain? And if not, can I be your chaplain? <laughs> So we currently do not. So we are how our unit is structured is actually a little unique. So the esports team is part of the recruiting outreach company. Yep. Within our company, we have the esports team, mm -hmm. we have the warrior fitness team, and then we have the as you were band. Okay. So very three very diverse organizations. Yeah. You know, you have a bunch of you know get strong people, a bunch mm -hmm. of nerdy people, and then a bunch of band nerds. There's a <laughs> distinction. There's right. a distinction. All nerds um, in their own way. <laughs> right. And then so like the co the dynamics between like seeing the esports players, you know, the like six foot tall, 160 pound soldier on the esports team. And then you have the six foot two, uh, 220 pound fitness athlete that's walking around like this. So like formations look a little weird because there's there's that size discrepancy. Um, but still, they, it's, it's a great unit. And then we're also part of the mission support battalion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we follow up under the marketing engagement brigade. Um, and I don't think I've ever met 
any of our chaplains and I okay. don't know if we have one. So okay. I, I so might be, have to dig into that one a little bit. So can I be your honor? Can I be the esports honorary chaplain? You know what? Yes, okay. we will. We will get you a role in the discord and I will make you specific permissions in the discord. <laughs> so if any soldiers have questions or concerns, they can just go right to you. Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> so uh, as we wrap up is how can someone get a hold of you guys? You mentioned discord. Is there like other ways that they can get a hold of you, um, whether it be through social media or any of that kind of stuff? So we're on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. There was another one, but I forgot it. YouTube, uh, Twitch. We're on all of those platforms. We do stream. Uh, everything's going to be slash U.S. Army Esports. So Twitter.com slash U.S. Army Esports. Mm -hmm. YouTube slash U.S. Army Esports. Like all of the above. It's it's going to be just slash U.S. Army Esports. We try to make it very, very simple right. um, from that. So yeah, follow all of us on there. Uh, you guys will see a lot more content coming from us over the next uh, couple months. Uh, we, we have a, a building unveil that we'd like to do so we can show our facility out here. Okay. Um, but that's still under hush hush wraps right now. So you didn't okay. hear that from me, the internet, <laughs> you didn't hear it. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I'll have a link below with all those different, um, with all those different links so that people can follow you guys and, um, and let's see what you guys do. And I just want to say thank you so much for, uh, coming on and being a part of this. Um, and it was good to catch up and to learn a little bit more about what the army has to offer. You know, I've been in for 13 years now and I've had three different army MOSs, which is like job titles, occupations, and I'm still learning new things about the army every single day. And kind of, it's cool to get to see different people's career paths. We have a common friend who was one of our sergeants that went on to parachute professionally for the army for a season. I mean, it's just kind of crazy on the routes that you get to do within the army, whether it's uh, officially or like through some of their like activities like esports. So um, thank you for sharing that with us. And yeah, I appreciate it for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I know it's super early over there on the West Coast right now. When you sent me that message at eight, I was like, that's like five in the morning for him. What is he doing? And I was like, oh, chaplains never sleep. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't. <laughs> no, right? um, as long as you have, as long as you have this, as long as you have coffee. Yes, like, coffee. Yeah. So I it, forgot where I put mine. This is the military secret weapon. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so um, if you aren't a coffee drinker before you join, after you join, you'll end up loving it. So um, at least in my case, but yeah. So thanks for joining. And, uh, We'll see you on Discord and on the other side. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Well, everybody, that wraps up our interview with Staff Sergeant Waller and about Army Esports. Hopefully, you learned a few things about what the Esports program is about and how you can get involved if you are a gamer. Now, if you liked this episode, please hit that like button. And if you think other people could get value from this video, please share it with those that you think would and if you haven't done so yet you know hit the subscribe button i just want to say thank you all for tuning in and i'll see you on the next video and bye